So it kind of goes in. A, this is a quick presentation about having a website. This might be your client's website, for example, or your own, and the things you could do to kind of increase your objectives and make it better. Uh, you know, everybody here is probably learning a lot about Drupal or extending their knowledge about Drupal, and they're taking things like modules and enhancing things and piling stuff on, and all of a sudden you have this application or a website that does something. Uh, you know, you get it up, you set it up, and, and it, at long last your website's alive and ready to go, and you push it out there, and you say, great, I have my website or my client's web application out there. You know, there's kind of a general three real apparent types of websites that you have that you're going to run into either providing for someone or building yourself. Most of the time, uh, a brochure website is something we call like a company platform or maybe it's a, you know, overall just a product support. Maybe you sell something, you sell widgets, and you need a website to display all those widgets or you, you have a, a law firm, you know, you're going to need a brochure website, something that doesn't do a whole lot for anyone. Uh, you might be building like an e-commerce website, and that can mean a lot. So you could have something that maybe you're selling, like an Amazon. You're selling jugs of milk across the country. You could be doing memberships, you know. So you could be doing something like a community where maybe it's a paid-in membership. Maybe for, you know, time with Phil here, he charges a million dollars an hour. So he has a website you can pay there, and then you get a membership to that website. Uh, or you could be doing like a community, right? And that could also be similar to that where people are socially involved, like a Facebook, you're talking to each other. could also be like a support community where, you know, if you're selling products on your e-commerce site, there may be an additional site that has support specifically for that, you know, or like hosting support. You have to go somewhere and, and talk to people and get feedback. Uh, there's also social communities such as, uh, like, a, what's the name of that one where you, you fill it out and it, uh, people get points for it, stuff like that, you know. Um, it's the tech one that does that. can't remember. Uh, anyway, so, you know, you have these objectives, and you've got it all up, and, and then you need to really focus on goals, and a lot of time this is where people get lost. They get the website up, and they go, okay, it's up. I'm done. You know, what, what is it that you're really looking to do? You know, that was the whole point of building in the first place was creating something that provides some sort of value, not only for someone outside on the Internet, but also for you. So really kind of line iting out what that is. Uh, most of what we'll talk about is the, the top three things we talked about here is this kind of stuff here. There's a couple other types, but these are really generic and easy to kind of keep in your brain. Uh, so, you know, you get it out there. Maybe you're trying to retain customers, get new customers. Maybe you've got a, a web shop and you're trying to get customers in, or maybe you're selling, you know, those widgets and you need to get more people to buy more of those. And so, you know, you need to look at that. So right here we got the picture of, you know, Google Analytics and it's live. And he's like, yes, I'm getting traffic. And so we have, you know, something going. Some people are coming to the website for some reason. But, you know, we don't necessarily know all we need to know about those people or, or get good information about them. So obviously you could go to Drupal. You could search for the rest of your life looking at the modules section and not knowing what any of those are unless you translate them into regular English from developer speak. And, uh, you know, you can find some of these things which already work inside Drupal. Uh, you can also find, you know, third-party systems, which is a lot of time what we integrate with because uh, at some point you've got to be realistic. Like, you can build anything you want in Drupal, but should you? Should you try to, like, compete with, like, a Salesforce CRM if you could pay $80 a month for it? Or you could spend your entire life trying to replicate that, you know. So you kind of have to look at these different systems. And these are the ones I'm going to kind of talk about uh, overall. CRM systems, DMS systems, marketing automation, which is kind of a combined effort, analytics and retargeting. So we're taking things that uh, Drupal doesn't do very well on its own, and we're getting third-party services, and we're going to make it happen. A lot of these have modules already in Drupal that do some of this. Some even have their own entire modules in Drupal that allow you to do this stuff without paying a third-party service at all. Uh, for people, and I'm going to go to the very base level, like a CRM system is customer relationship management. Uh, coming from a tech world, that always doesn't align up well with our thoughts in our mind. Like a lot of time, when you if you go to like a Salesforce and you just 
got the free trial, you look at it and you're like, what is this? Uh, a lot of CRM services are, are built to kind of stay in this little cloud. So you have, you know, your, your leads coming in and this marketing people doing stuff in a big business. You have the salespeople out there running around telling people it's the greatest thing in the world. And then you have the service people, a lot of like the web people and stuff, just trying to keep up with the other crazy people. So, you know, you take these users that are over here and, and they're trying to get in and, and follow it around. A CRM essentially is just a way to keep a hold of all those people and understand what's going on and make sure that nobody's falling off the map. It tells you if there's a problem with somebody, it tells you if they canceled and why, and it's a good database at the end of the day to, to research things and figure out what happened or what is working. Um, at the bottom of this link here, which these will be online so you don't have to write it down, there's an entire comparison page Oops. of, I'll, I'll leave it up there, but basically it's an entire grid on Wikipedia of every CRM that has any merit of being out there and what it has, what it does, uh, if it's open source, if it's proprietary, if you download it, if it's online and you pay for it. Uh, we're just going to focus on a couple of them. And uh, just in Drupal itself, there's modules or extensions that will allow you to specifically have a CRM on your Drupal site itself. So there's a Civi CRM that was originally built for nonprofits. This one uh, has a lot more like emphasis on things a nonprofit might have, like volunteering, uh, you know, just inbound donors looking to, to provide funds. So if you're looking to do a Drupal site, and it happens to also be a nonprofit, that aligns up very well. It's also extended itself to be a lot more functional in the, in the days, and I'll talk about different features. Uh, Red Hand is a new Drupal module that's out there that is a full-service CRM as well. And there's also one called CRM Core that are out there, and those are probably the three. Does anybody else have any other CRM modules they know about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's why I'm staying right. <laughs> no, um, I was going to ask you, have you tried Erlap? I haven't tried Erlap, but I did hear about it. So uh, I didn't put it on here because I don't know anything about it. Yeah, Erlap is a distribution. Right. And it's a distribution of Drupal itself that is basically a CRM, right? It's actually like a project management distribution. So a lot of shops use like Redline just because it's, it's Ruby based, but it's more robust and like, sadly, like open atrium for example. Yeah, no, I haven't either. I did look at it though, and I, I didn't have any uh, overall insight into it, uh, so I didn't really go through it. And I was kind of trying to stay away from uh, things that you could download and try yourself, and focus on ones that basically you, you could still download a lot of these or install them for free trials. But the actual, you know, ability of doing that and doing it, and getting into all these and knowing the difference between them is is kind of a pain for everyone to figure out. So I kind of went out to the ones that we run into in the enterprise and uh, pointed out ways what we've used them for. So like uh, everybody's heard of Salesforce probably, right? And Salesforce is a big monster. So, you know, I'm gonna go to their website and they buy everything in sight. So if you look at their website now versus five years ago when it used to just be strictly a CRM product, you can still come in here you can get a free trial of the service, and you can ins install it. It's a very big application when it comes down to it, and it does a lot. So, you know, it's, it's cloud, it's online, so you just start a trial or you pay for it, and you're up and rolling, uh, which is what they consider essentially software as a service. So it's just SaaS, like you don't download anything. It's just there. Um, you know, it's reasonably expensive. It's going to be... Probably to get a good one, you're going to have to pay 65 per user per month. You know, for a small person, one or two person shop, you can get a, a lower version. But it probably won't have all the features you want. And, uh, you know, it's very customizable. So you can go through and you can create different fields. You can, just like Drupal, say, oh, I want, you know, this location data. I want this over here and I want all this detail about my customers. And you can even build little objects. So if you sell widgets, you could say, like, this guy buys type A widgets, this guy buys type B widgets. And it does have a free trial. Uh, one of the things that we've considered a uh, high cost of entry in, in Salesforce is, and especially like I was saying, it doesn't necessarily map out to how a, a technical person would do things. Is It's really when you install it or you set it up, set up as 
you sell products, and this is here to support your products. And in the old school term of CRM thinking, it's the idea is that you would like go get all these leads. Like you go to a trade show and you get all these leads in, and then you just bash them with sales, and then you get something out of it, and you sell them something, and you're done. You know, on a website or nowadays, it's not really that cut and dry. So when you install this, it's kind of hard to match up to what you're doing online because you have, you know, maybe a hundred products. You have different types of customers, especially if uh, your your client or you do services. It's even more abstract, right? It's not just a, a linear thing. You just go call fifty people and you get one sale out of it, and you hold them in your CRM, and then you don't uh, have as many recurring customers. So this is really built to them follow up with them and get them to actually go and, uh, you know, buy more of your product. Well, maybe that's not possible, you know. Maybe you only buy once on a membership site. You're not going to, like, go buy ten memberships. So uh, one of the higher costs of entry here is since it's so customizable, you can really set it up very well for yourself. And there's Drupal modules that allow you to connect it into your forms. There's uh, Drupal modules that allow it to connect the users from your Drupal site into into Salesforce and it'll all interconnect. So if somebody updates their content on your website, it'll go and put it over in Salesforce for you. So if you have, uh, you know, you don't have one place where there's old data or bad data. So that CRM itself is probably one of the top ones out there. It just has a monster community behind it and it has a ton of applications and they just keep buying even giant software. So they just bought like, a, I think it's Exact Target. And there's other ones that there's even one of the systems I'm going to mention here that was bought by them, and they're just piling in products into this thing. So you can really get this up. You can, uh, for example, a lot of people try to build uh, a Drupal site, and then they go get, like, a newsletter service. They get, like, a MailChimp, and they'll put that into their Drupal site. Well, essentially, in a more enterprise game, you would push all your data to, like, a Salesforce. This has add-ons anyway that you can integrate with Exact Target or MailChimp or whatever. So this would end up being your one-stop database of customers or even leads because there's people that aren't going to register on your site and maybe get a bunch of business cards like, well, what are you going to do with it? So you put them into here. That can be where all that data resides and it doesn't live on your Drupal user database for no reason. You know, this is kind of a horrible picture that it's probably hard to see. That, you know, this is kind of what they all look like. They all look like tables of people names. Um, they do a, a reasonable good job of creating simple charts that you can go through and, and see you got like 50 new customers today or, you know, uh, you made a billion dollars tomorrow, you know. So you can go through and see these things. Um, overall, the benefit of, of just record keeping is all a CRM really is going to do for you. It's really up to you to decide what that previous objective was and then make this system perform in that way. And I think that's where a lot of people get lost. Integrating their product or their, their client's products with a CRM is they're not going at it from a goal-based system. They're just looking to put data somewhere and then it's over. And then you're like, I don't know what you do with this thing, but good luck, you know? And that's where they kind of start to fall apart. You don't, don't use them as much is because you didn't have a reason to come in here and make this happen. Uh, there's another one out there that we've used quite a bit. It's called Sugar CRM. This one is more open source. So it started as an open source product like Drupal. Has a bunch of add-ins. Has partner community. It's very, very similar. And uh, there's a place you can go just to download it. It has a lot of the same product features as a uh, Salesforce does without the overhead cost. So you can just go get the community edition. It's PHP based. You can put it on the same web server as Drupal. You got a CRM, and it integrates with, uh, as you can see here, I think at the bottom, there's a there's some modules for it. So you could even set it up, put the modules in, run on the same virtual server as Drupal, and then you've got CRM directly attached to Drupal, and it's really nice. Uh, one of the downfalls of it is there is a kind of commercial version, you know, we've all seen software that's open source, except... You know, if you want to pay for it, we'll actually help you with it. And, uh, you know, if you go to their website, sugarcrm.com, try to find the community edition. So if I went to products, and I go, oh, that's a lot of links. Let me go to editions and pricing. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, hey, check out this cool link at the bottom. 
oh, you can download it. Cool. Thanks. So, you know, they took the community edition and they hid it in the little tiny pocket of their website and they're trying to get people to just buy the software as a service version that's controlled by them and has all the add-ons. So, you know, as an open source person, sometimes I don't really like that because, you know, you're kind of taking away from a whole community that probably built this thing and then said, well, we're better now. We're doing corporate stuff and then you guys can stay in this little corner and you can still download it for free if you can find it, you know? So... Yeah, I mean, kind of turns me off from using it, but it does do a fairly good job of recording all those contacts, uh, making sure there's a place for your, you know, sales crew or service crew to go put notes in on customers, go look back and see why there's new customers or where they're canceled from, and uh, manage those objectives like I talked about. Um, here's a picture of kind of what it looks like. I'm just kind of grab these off the internet, so they have weird stuff on them. But, like I'm saying, it's similar stuff. It's going to look kind of weird and great in They all kind of look the same. And uh, you can customize out all the fields. You can change whatever you want in here. And it does a pretty good job of allowing you to even integrate with your email. So you can, like, put your email client in here. You can blast out to your clients. You can integrate add-ins for newsletters. Uh, you name it. And they're actually getting fairly uh, into social media here. So if you know somebody's Twitter handle or whatever, it'll try to pull in some of that data and mash that into your CRM for you so you can see what's going on, see if they're blasting you and saying, like, you know, Kevin, your product's horrible on Twitter, and you're, like, able to pick it up in your CRM and see that there's a problem or maybe there's something good, you know. Uh, one of the other ones we have out there is Tiger, and this one's more true open source. You just go there, you can download it. Uh, there is still a commercially supported version if you don't want to download it and manage it yourself. And... Uh, it has modules as well in Drupal that you can just plug it right in. Somebody fills out your contact form, it'll pass it into there, to there for you. Uh, and then one of the final ones is Zoho. It's a lot cheaper, and it's really focused more on developers. If you're really into APIs and pulling in data and pushing it back out, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here, and it's free up to three users, and it does the same stuff as the other ones. Uh, one of the downfalls I saw on it was there's only a Drupal 6 module, so... Uh, you might have to do some work to get that connected. And it kind of looks like that. It has a little chat, and it has a calendar and events and stuff like that. Uh, final one, Microsoft. Anyone like Microsoft in here? No? Okay. So, you know, Microsoft Dynamics, it's been around forever. It used to be called Microsoft CRM, and it was a horrible system back in the day. This one's a little better, and it's still downloadable, but it is Windows-based. So unless you're running your Drupal site on IAS and, you know, making that happen, um, you'd have, like, two different web hosts running and might not be the best thing for you. If you're in a large enterprise, though, and they don't like a lot of Linux stuff, like, this might be a good opportunity to use this. Uh, and it's going to cost more than, if, if you have to ask, you can't afford it kind of game. There's no pricing on the website. Uh, other systems that we do run into a lot, and this is kind of more key to Drupal, is document management systems. So everybody that has a Drupal site now stores all their files and sites default files and you know a couple months later realizes man it would have nice to put some more directories in here instead of just having everything in a giant pile of things that I uploaded. Uh, one of the downfalls of Drupal in that file structure of uploading and managing files is it's, it's not managed at all. There's no uh, extra folders. There's not metadata describing the files in there. Uh, document management systems really are pretty robust and they're meant to control files and latest versions and same stuff Drupal does for nodes, really just more in a secure space of keeping it in there. So one of the problems with like Drupal files is, you know, what if um, right over there is not supposed to access that quote that I'm putting out in my sales chart, you know? Well, he can because it's in Drupal and it's just sitting there. So you know, in a document management system, the people are integrated, the logins are integrated with the document management system in Drupal. You'd be, able, you'd be able to look up some keywords, maybe, and find some documents in there. You'd be secure, so if this person can't see it, that person can, they can see it. And it's easily searchable. Right now, if you go in your Drupal site, it's almost impossible sometimes to find some random file that you left in there. Uh, one of the bigger risks being it's just out there on the Internet. Somebody's linking to it. You don't know, you know. Uh, two of them that I like, uh, Alfresco and Confluence, uh, 
are part of this giant list of document management systems. I think that's the wrong link. But Alfresco alone has a entire project around it, and there's a module called CMIS, and there's a Alfresco module, and uh, AppNovation, one of the development shops that also partners with Acquia, has a uh, the initiative called Canopy, where they've done a lot of work of integrating Alfresco and Drupal together to kind of create that uh, one-stop shop. Drupal does really good content management. Well, let's add Alfresco and have really good document management at the same time. So if you have a lot of documents stored, a lot of stuff online, it's really nice to have that multi-platform set up. Uh, it has a very good community behind it. It's open source. Uh, one of the only problems that I see is it is Java-based. So you're going to be running more overhead if you have this on the same server, running Java, where that's going to crash on your Tomcat all day, and then you're going to have you know, your PHP and Drupal running and, and stealing resources from each other. So you need to be aware of how to configure that, or maybe you do it on two separate systems. Uh, you know, It does have a very powerful rule system that says like you can do this, you can't do that. You can access this from here, you can't access the, that from over here. Confluence is a little more software as a service. Starts at about 10 bucks a month, but you can also download it and host it yourself and integrate with it as well. Pull it up. It's actually a very clean system. Go ahead. Uh, document management was originally built to store files, if you think like when people started just scanning and having electronic documents. Document management was really about, even internally in larger companies, being able to categorize and store all those scanned in documents, where a content management system was more uh, database driven written content, but not so much file based content. So. and stored stuff as a as a node basically kind of yeah i've seen a lot of people do that and it works fairly well it's just a, a lot more work sometimes than some of these that will do some auto categorizing of your documents and pull in metadata and integrate uh, a little bit better with security but you could absolutely turn like drupal's content management system of how it works and you could store a file there and access it the only difference being in Drupal, for example, like we're talking about, that file still is just stored in a public place and it's easily accessible by anything, even if it was a private store document. There's not a way to keep somebody easily out of that file if they're all being stored in the same repository, where this doesn't let you access any of those files and would, would stop you from getting into that or even knowing it exists. So you can kind of do that in Drupal. It will take you a little bit more of handling files more privately and only accessing those files through node access uh, than a lot of normal Drupal installations where you're just really going to have a public repository of files. And most people would have set up their Drupal site not thinking, I need to hide all my stuff. They would have thought, I'm just going to throw this out there and then later on they're like, oh, I actually need to manage these files. So this does a very good job off the bat of doing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the new stuff in, in this one that's kind of nice and it does allow you to do a little bit of overall management as they have things like, you know, action items and it integrates with your users so you can like have a meeting and have all the tasks in there and managed and have it linked to files in the document management system. So they kind of have an overall, you know, project management look at handling your files and having access to them. And it, it looks nice. It's probably worth the money if, you know, you're looking to do a, a, a third party document management system. I would probably start with Alfresco. If that doesn't fit your need, I would go to maybe a Confluence. Is that open source as well? It's not open source. And uh, it does have a very robust API. So you can get a lot of stuff on it, but yeah, at the end of the game, you can't really customize it as you'd like to. So even if you saw Postable, what would they sell you the Mm-hmm. And it does have a really good workflow setup. So like, version control or, you know, 
you upload a new revision to it, it will allow you to go through some workflow of approvals and stuff before it goes to wherever state that document should go, which I actually really like about this over a, a little bit of the alfresco setup where it's a little more rigid, you know. Uh, one of the other systems we run into a lot, actually right now even more, is marketing automation. And a lot of the CRMs will do this. And everyone always goes, oh, yeah, yeah. Marketing automation. Yeah, I know what that is. Well, yeah, we, it, it's everything. When you look at it, you look at this thing, and it's it, the, really the big idea about marketing automation is that if you set this all up right, that you have to do less work to get person that's interested in your product qualified and to the right place to buy it or to fill out a form to contact you than everyone else. And maybe that is after a sale, then you go get them again, and you get them to buy something again. Uh, so this could be anything from these creative assets, like forms out there, or maybe you have a marketing campaign, or you have an ad on Google, and bringing them to your website. And you can see through like lead generation, where you might have had AdWords or trade show or something, and you've tagged these people. As they come through and, and they get qualified, you can kind of see who they are. And you go through these marketing automation systems and it will do things such as, you know, maybe if, if I make it to the website and I filled out this contact record form, that you will take me to a different page than other ones. We've all ran into that where, like, you search for something and it hits some crazy landing page. Well, the idea is that, that you would get different messaging from wherever you came from than just the general public. So you could say, well, I'm always getting my, you know, leads out of, uh, you know, the East Coast because I talk about tornadoes on my blog. And I, you know, get this stuff over here in the West Coast because I talk about surfing. So you don't want to have the same message to those very different people. So you build out one of these marketing automation paths to tell those people the right things and get them involved in the exact plan to the product that you need them to get to. You can also even customize things such as maybe uh, if you have products on the website, you know, the top 10 products that people sell on the East Coast are going to be different than the people on the West Coast. So you can take two different, like, node views on your Drupal site and send them to two absolutely different places because you know specifically that, that those people are never going to buy those products. So you just get them out of the picture and let them focus on that stuff alone. Uh, you know, Amazon does some of this. When you go there and you look at something and then, you know, you, you go back and it's like, well, look at all these cell phones and you know, it does a horrible job after you already bought it. And you're like, go away. Cell phones, I already bought one. But it will kind of try to direct you to the right place. So most of these systems that, that you can get, and there's even ones you can download, um, will try to do this for you. And a lot of them, you know, it's, it's the idea of just trying to bring in money in from nowhere and do nothing. Like, that's the whole idea behind it. And they call it, like, you know, four-hour work week, where the marketing is doing its own thing, and it's not for, you know... You don't have to do a single thing to get people through your website. Uh, there's one out there called Automator that's kind of new. Uh, it's not cheap, 600 a month. But, you know, if that brings in 10x that on sales, then it works. So what it does a lot of the time is it'll build a lead scoring, and it does have a Drupal project called Automator that you can install on your site, and it will... Score the leads coming in from different places. You can tag it. You could say, well, let me know when Kevin's on my website. And it will send an email notification to you saying, I hit the website because it's tracked me. Maybe I filled out a form. It's thrown a cookie into my browser. And it's tracking that I came back to the website, how many times I came back, what pages I went to. So if you have a very focused set of people that you need to get to the right place, you can actually track that. And you can say, this is coming into my website and you can see where they're falling off. You can also change that experience. So maybe there's a block on your website that needs to be different for those types of people. You know, web people should have this block because they'll fill out this form, but they won't fill out that one. You can do all this in this automator system. Uh, it kind of looks like this, and it has a lot of like, has everybody done, used rules before? Probably not. Uh, rules kind of it does the if then, and you can configure things inside your website. It's very similar to that. It says like, if Kevin comes in, you know, throw them to the 404 page where, you know, send an email to these people and say, hey, follow up with this person in two days. So you can be really creepy and say, like, we know somebody's on our website. You just call them right then and be like, hey, I noticed you're on my website right now. Wow. 
Yeah, I'm watching you right now. I see you go to this page. So you can do a lot of stuff, and it will give you good reporting of, of what's going on. And, you know, 600 a month beginning is a lot of money when you think about uh, just a one-stop purchase and you're, you're shelling out this money. But if you look at it and you have a really focused objective of the return, it's probably a lot higher than that. So you can invest in that, and it will actually convert to leads if you set this up right for you. Uh, one of the other ones we use a lot is Infusionsoft. They're also a client of ours, so I, I throw them in there. They're a little bit cheaper. They're at 300 a month starting. Uh, they have a very large add-on marketplace where you can do a ton of stuff, and I would just suggest like going to some of these web pages and checking them out. Uh, you know, they do this kind of drag and drop, and this is a really good example of marketing automation for an e-commerce cart, where you know you start out here and maybe you you know purchased something here. You get to uh, the checkout page. Maybe you change your mind. Instead of creating an account, you did something else. And you can build these maps of how you want people to go across your website and what happens at each stage. So if I went to Amazon and I look at you know, spinning rims and then I change my mind and then I go look at something else, you know, I could maybe send an email out with a newsletter post that's much different than somebody that just came off the website with no reason to be there. So you could say, well, come back, and we'll give you 25% off this, you know, discount versus, uh, you know, coming through and, and doing nothing and getting full price. So I've seen this a lot of time with marketing automation is when you have, like, a uh, sometimes an e-commerce site, but a lot of time, like, a membership site. You're going to, like, lynda.com, and you're going to learn all these videos about Drupal. Uh, one of the things I've seen is, you know, you go there, you look at it, you look at the price, Maybe you half fill out the form. Then you're like, ah, nah, I'll come back to this. So I don't want to pay full price. They send you a newsletter. A couple days later, you get something in your mail. It's like, sign up for Linda right now. It's 25% off. You know, a couple days later, 35% off. They're just trying to get you back to that website and convert you. So you can use these marketing automations to get people to come back to the website actually fill it out, get a special coupon for them, and convert them into somebody that wouldn't have paid full price, but will work them and whittle them down into some sort of appropriate price strategy for them. Uh, this one's Eloqua, which is very similar to that. Most of these are all kind of the same. Uh, these are more enterprise versions than the other two. The, the first two I talked about are going to be a little bit more uh, three to five person-y you know, systems or companies or maybe 20 person companies that don't have the entire staff of like 50 person marketing agency. You don't, you're not going to probably have the people to do the stuff that this is going to do for you. And that's why these are, are a little bit more discount than if you look at like an Eloqua, uh, Marketo and Pardo or Parda, you know, you're going to spend like two grand a month easily on each one of these. They're going to have very similar uh, systems to the ones I just talked about. But some of these are a little bit heavy duty. They have like their own landing page systems where you can go out, um, pull people in, push them into your sales force, do A-B testing on the forms. Um, this one, Eloqua, has a kind of cool system in it that I wish we could do better with web forms in Drupal where it has kind of these smart forms. So let's say you go to like uh, fill out some uh, white paper download form. The first time you go for one, it might be like, hey, just give me your name. Hey, just give me your email the next time you go. Oh, where did you grow up? Or, you know, what's, where do you live? You know, enter in your zip. Every time you go back, it changes the form on you. And it tries to fill out the full form on you from the most important data to the least important data so that they can get a full profile on you without boring you with, like, 11,000 questions when you go hit that page. So it's a really cool system for stuff like that. And you don't catch on because you're only going to go there maybe twice. So you don't catch on that it's like just trying to build this character around you. So they have to do some really cool stuff with the kind of weird systems like that. Uh, again, Marketo, and these are really big systems. These are more like lead scoring and event management systems where they kind of go in and try to figure out who you are and, and uh, you know, will kind of automatically categorize people for you, similar to the other ones. Uh, Pardo or Pardot, I don't know which one you call it is now purchased by Salesforce. This one's pretty cool, even though it's about 2000 a month, because since it went on the Salesforce platform, 
It's also connected to like data.com, which used to also be Jigsaw, has a bunch of you know client or customer records out there, so they can really get some great data on somebody that maybe just fills out their email address here. They have an entire you know profile on somebody, so it'll suck it all into your system and even into your CRM from their other systems that are categorizing all their data on you. It's also the NSA. Right. <laughs> yeah. So they can spy on you and figure it out. Speaking of spying on you, um, one of the other ways of doing things is, you know, retargeting. So we've all seen this too, and you go to like, you know, LA Drupal Camp's website, and then you're like, oh, I'll go look at that later, and you go off site. Um, you know, you close your browser, maybe you're busy. Uh, there's retargeting systems you can use out there to get people to come back. And these are ad-based systems where you can put ads into a system, some of them even do like live bidding where you can pay three cents or 12 cents depending on the place. And then you can go to other websites and you start seeing ads for the same thing, for the LA Drupal camp everywhere. And you're like, what is going on? Well, it's because these retargeting things like, uh, you know, fetch back or some of the other ones, maybe I go and I click on this Jersey and I leave and then I come back and I see it everywhere. Those are just ad based systems. Then you can use them to get people that had, looked at interest and maybe this fanware collection and pull them back into your website and, uh, and click on your ads where they're actually targeted specifically for those people that, you, that actually went to your website and said, yes, I'm interested in this. So you're, in my opinion, this is the more effective ads than just full on AdWords where it's just blasting because somebody made it there. They had enough interest to get further down to the page. This isn't just like your homepage. And they looked at something Maybe you can get them to come back and purchase off of that, you know? So you're, you're spending a lot less money overall just blasting ads everywhere. You're, you're really only focusing on people that are directly interested in your stuff. Um, so there's fetch back. Ad roll is very similar, as you can see here. It's just like some graphics of how that might work. And uh, it works really well with like a marketing automation because you can take um, maybe somebody that came in off a magazine ad that had a weird domain and focus them on a product that that person's probably going to buy. And so they might hit your website, bounce off somewhere else, go look at this, and then like on you know, People Magazine, they're gonna see the ad for whatever you wanna sell that person. So you can kinda be really creative with these different systems and create very uh, effective solutions that will get people to wherever you want them on your website and increase those goals that I originally talked about. Uh, and then, again, on the NSA, spying on you. Analytics is the last kind of set that I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, so here's a picture of Seedling Cat spying on these people on their website. And uh, we all know what analytics is most of the time. I think a lot of time we just poorly set it up, myself included. You know, there's a lot of things, and the easiest one to get installed is Google Analytics. You just go there. There's even a Drupal module that you can install. You get a little... ID, you put it on your website, and then it monitors everything that's going on. Uh, some other ones, there's two types that, that you traditionally see. You see those ones like Google, where it's a JavaScript-based analytics system. What, what it does is it will take, uh, run a little script every time somebody does something on your website. If somebody clicks a link, or if somebody goes to this page, it just sucks that all up, sends it to Google, and they do whatever they want with it. That's the, key. That's the key, right. And it's magic, and it's free. And you know why it's free? It's because they're saving all that information, and they know a lot about you. And so every single website on the Internet pretty much uses Google Analytics. Um, there's other ones that are log-based. AW Stats is a good example of that, where it's taking, like, your server logs and aggregating that all up. And a lot of those are still, again, very free, very simple to use. And then you can kind of get into some, some higher-cost ones here. Uh, one of the jokes is, you know, with Google Analytics is there's custom variables you can put in. So maybe you have, like, targeting variables. You say, well, you know, somebody stores this cookie data or the search term. Like, store that in a custom variable. And they give you, a, is it four or five? I think they give you four. And then the fifth one, you have to go to the professional version. I think that's $150,000 a year. So it's free until you need five variables. But uh, it's almost impossible to get to that point. You can do a lot with only no variables alone. Uh, and then there's site catalysts, web trends, and some of these are, are much different. And some of the common features, and I thought I'd just pull up a uh, Google Analytics account to kind of go over this. Oh, 
I'm just going to use ours. It's probably poorly put together. But, you know, you can see the different traffic going on. So we can see a, each day, and it's really a nice little simple layout to look at stuff uh, in here. And there are a lot of them are very similar, where you can see that by week, by month. You can go back and look forever. You can compare it to, you know, maybe the previous week, and you can see what changed. And you can see the percentage difference between things. You can see who's new, who can, who's returned, you know. So they've done a lot of different digging to understand what's going on on your web page. Uh, you can see where they're from. You can see what browsers they're using. And, you know, most people install this and then they go, yeah, I got analytics, I'm done. They don't do anything with it, you know. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. You can uh, build out conversions. So you can say, well, if somebody hits the, you know, I don't think we've used goals, so it's probably a bad example, but we do a lot for our clients, and it's like if somebody hits this form or buys products, count this as a point, count that as a point, and you build uh, goals that say, okay, well, this day I got 50 people to sign up for my webinar, you know, and so you get some value out of it, perceived value for yourself. Uh, that doesn't always mean it has to hit a form. Maybe if they hit a landing page, you know, that can work out. And then you can build these funnels, which I kind of have a picture back here, where... You can see here, like, somebody placed an order and completed it. So you can see, like, this many people actually, 42% worked out for you. You know, if you're doing a, a, a site for a, a client, it's nice for them to see that there's some value coming out of it. This is where you show them that you did valuable work, right? It's not just that the website got an increase in traffic and you still sold the same amount of whatevers. You know, you can say, well, you know, I increased your order completion 60%. Uh, it's more of a value add. Like, we don't necessarily do it all the time, but it is really nice for you to show things. And one of the things we have been doing a lot more now is uh, building out dashboards. So 